Okay, so here's round two of my trading game. Just played it just now, this second. And uh, they are 90 minutes, 10 second games. I was going to attempt to record the game, but um, as you know, it can take a long time for the player to move. I'm not gonna go through all that editing of um, blocking out each move that we make. So I'm just doing the actual evaluations after the games because they are long games. Okay, so we played as white in this game. And as usual, we were basically looking at again this new addition to the answer process which is you know really taking that moment to look and see whether or not we can only capture if it is absolutely necessary it's got to improve our position uh, if we do capture we're not just taking it now just to take it but we are not doing anything new that's the key thing we're not going to try and do new moves or anything like that it really has to enhance what we currently have because we don't have time now the com competitions are coming up the over the board things are actually happening um, there'll be more online tournaments that I'm going to be going to and what I don't want to do is practice anything new or fresh or anything like that I just want to do what I do and try and enhance that so they pushed forward blocking the pawn and we developed the knight and we attacked through the center keeping it nice and simple and then we captured pretty straightforward uh, that was a nice capture it's a safe capture and it's one that improves our position i believe anyway and then they came through with the knight capturing i did pause for a moment there because it's like oh, i don't usually see the knight taking how do we win the tempo in order for this knight to really be functional it does need other pieces kind of supporting it because it's now by itself so we can bring our queen up to attack it because it doesn't have any pieces defending it i did envisage because i've seen a recent game um, of this where the bishop came here and defended the knight but again it's like yes it's getting your pieces out but it's kind of getting them out to support a piece which really shouldn't need supporting at this early stage of the game if you know what i mean it should be out there feeling lively in a good prominent position um, being more functional than having to be so supported by the bishop so it looks like the gauge bar agrees was agrees with us there so now we can establish looking for i'm going to say it the quick and dirty <laughs> um, going for the cheap stuff yeah and if you can get away with it you can get away with it you know you, you have to throw it in there if you so long as you know about these cheap and dirty tactics and if the opponent's going to allow you to get that cheap and dirty tactic then so be it the game's over and done and so i think it is nice having a good kind of knowledge base within your uh, system of understanding well how can i end the game if the opponent's going to give it to me but have in your back pocket also that if it doesn't go your way is your position still strong enough to go the extra mile that's the key difference really between quick and dirty tactics that i've seen done on other players and watched in my own games and you know basically watched other people play as well yes the quick and dirty tactic if it works fine you've caught them by surprise but majority of the times when i see that it's failed the opponents then don't really know what to do and they're floundering around so we don't want to flounder around we want to make sure that we're attacking with sure footing if it goes wrong because it is easily defendable queen comes down to defend again might not have been the better move but it's defending all the same as you can see the gauge bar showing that we're kind of out and out winning almost here it's actually plus 6.9 just from that movement that the opponents made i haven't forced them to make that move and let's see what it's saying but then anything else bishop g6 yeah it's saying bring it back basically lose the unite you know so it's <laughs> it's one of those things lose your knight or lose the pawn here lose your rook so either way that position is not too good for the opponent so bringing the queen round then we can attack the pawn here again this is nothing magical this is straightforward the, the pawn is unprotected now so now we can attack the knight so kind of improving our position on the board 
but I'm always mindful when I'm in these types of positions as I've mentioned before is that you know you do potentially have the your queen could get trapped yes it's taken a pawn off the board and it looks like it's going to actually get the rook but the queen can come back and defend you know it can come here what do you do from there it always stems back to that main issue that I said at the beginning is if you're going to do quick and dirty type tactics you really have to build on that so that if it doesn't work what's next is your position going to improve all the time on the board or are you going to definitely be safe throughout the process so they brought the queen back so it's now plus 10 plus 10.8 from that particular move I'm not saying i'm doing the moves right or not and we bring the bishop through now because it's got like an x-ray through to the king it's pinning the annoying pin it's pinning the queen through to the king again nothing magical the opponent is giving us these positions but it's been able to spot these positions but in my head i'm still saying to myself i don't know it's winning i know it's putting pressure on the queen um because at the end of the day i'm not actually pressuring his king area so he's still going to have pieces on the board how am i going to get his king squished so he brings the bishop back defending like i said it's never set in stone you know yes he may lose his queen but then i might lose my queen as well and is this going to improve my position on the board so we take his quick queen quick sharpest off the board then the bishop takes and then we can bring our king to safety also putting a check on the king and this was where really i was like not panicked but the creative brain was going yeah it looks nice but what are you going to do with a single queen up there just because you've got a king putting a check on the king that doesn't mean anything it's it can't it can take here but that's about it i suppose because the king has to come back and i suppose then the king has to go back a little bit more maybe we can take this pawn here so it's slowly trying to logicalize the position but whilst i was there i was thinking yeah that don't feel too good dude yes i'm bouncing taking a few pawns i do not want to get my queen trapped that's all i'm thinking so the king moves um, kind of forced because of the check position so then we take the pawn with a check again on the king bishop comes and blocks um, i didn't picture the um, bishop coming and blocking at that stage i was really wanting to get this but his knight was blocking here had the option basically of coming backwards or maybe taking the pawn off here trying to get some activity going here maybe the bishop coming putting a check on and oh again i was thinking his king is airy maybe i get castled and then put some pressure on his king but a lot of thoughts were going on so we brought the bishop through attacking so potentially hoping they do this so that we're trying to open up space in front of his king because nothing was clear there was no clear checkmate from this i needed to get more pieces into the game i needed to potentially get my rooks facing off his king i needed to get this knight out into the game as well the queen just cannot do it by itself so they pushed down and we captured they captured back so because they're pressing on to us now we're looking at having a bit of a two-on-one situation here and maybe trying to put a bit of pressure on the king this way and then he's opening up his rook space now i'm thinking oh we're going to be in some serious trouble he's going to be wanting to do this type of thing do we actually castle do we even think about taking this pawn um not going to really win out too much because the knight can just take back really um and the queen can't take back so it's it's a two on one but he's got his king acting as another two on one support so really it's not going to work so we castled looking to really lean on this rook because of the pin through to the king but we're not going to rush anything because we're feeling the pressure coming towards our queen here and at this stage it's like well okay what do we do with the queen have i got it trapped i'm just trying to give it a little bit of space to get to some type of safety so i'm feeling half decently okay with this position still chomping at the bit to get this out really wanted to get the knight out as well but probably saving that so that we can get this space here if we're allowed to 
And then we saw this poor move and I thought, oh, this might be the opportunity to actually throw it in. So we've now got the X-ray through. Obviously, he can defend by dropping the pawns here, but I'm willing to get my knight across here, maybe get that off and try and manage around the, the center with the pieces that I've got. So he defends one, so we bring the knight across and then he drops his next pawn. So now we can put a bit of a check on his king, trying to... I thought maybe if he does move away, then we could take the bishop. Uh, but obviously, I think they're probably going to go backwards. Could have even gone forward. One of those things to keep defending the bishop. So they went backwards. So I, I gave a little bit of a size. Like, damn, making me work really hard here. Always conscious. Don't want to get my king queen trapped. But now's probably the time to maybe start disheveling uh, the knight. Let's get that out of the way. Trading down as best possible. Any potential for attacking on this side here. Or just getting the knight moved. Bringing this maybe to here. You know to here. Looking for a fork type thing. At this point. Because I had so much time on my hands. I did think to myself. Well I don't really need to work so hard. And. I think I probably would have got away with this rook move. Putting two on one pressure onto this um, bishop. Because if this rook went to defend. Then the bishop would be able to take. I'm assuming. So. And plus also this pawn can't actually take the knight because the rook has got the x-ray through to the king. So for that moment there, I, can't, I think I let myself down in terms of overthinking and I let the creative brain go a little bit crazy because I didn't need to move this knight. I could have just left it there. But instead I had these fancy thoughts of coming up here. So that was a small error on my part. A gauge bar showing it's plus 19.2. So I shouldn't really beat myself up at this moment in time. Uh, but it does drop to um, plus 10. So it drops 9 points from that. I didn't need to move that knight at all. So something to really remember. Especially for the OTB games coming up. It's quite crucial actually. Because I've had plenty of time. You know, you're talking like, what's that, knight? It is 90 minutes and only broken two minutes there so plenty of time take my time don't need to panic about that situation at all so they bring the bishop through attacking so we can reduce down keeping it nice and simple and really not wanting to give away any pawns or pieces so i just thought well i'll push this pawn up when i did push it up i thought damn that's so weak that is such a weak move dude couldn't you think of anything else you know again could have looked to come here but he would have been able to defend at this point so again i think this was a key move here earlier on just bringing the rook here to put more pressure because i'm working too hard really here so then the bishop attacks our queen so we can take the pawn off the board and i did expect the rook to actually come here and to help support a potential attack coming towards here at some stage getting rid of the knight with his knight of some somehow and then putting pressure onto our king that's what i was envisaging so i was quite happy when i saw this rook move because i thought i don't really know what that is so we could push up now to see if he's going to take and he does actually move his knight so that gives us a kind of tempo situation in terms of whether or not he captures and he didn't capture so then at this point here they must have fallen into our little bit of problem that we had with creative thinking thinking yes i'm championing this pawn all the way down because now we can take the knight with a check on his king last movement yeah it was quite interesting that because we did take our time here uh, we could have taken here um, but we just said nah let's just go here there's a nice little checkmate but i think the game would have been over earlier if i'd just done this type of movement towards the bishop and the uh, the uh, king with the queen supporting the knight didn't have to move because the rook had the x-ray through to the king gotta watch those things there they save a lot of time in the long run good game though